at the beginning of August, there was a story in the Globe and Mail saying that your job was in jeopardy. Um, from what I understand, you then spoke to the Prime Minister about it, and the Prime Minister expressed confidence in you after that story. D did you believe that statement when he expressed confidence in you? Well, you know, of course. I mean, we, we worked together for five years. Yeah. I mean, it was a long period of, of an important partnership. I mean, the finance minister's job is to think about the economy mm -hmm. and worry about the short and the long term. And the prime minister's job is to do the same, but also have a broader perspective. So, sure. so there's always periods where, you know, we had to work together and get to conclusions that made sense. I think it worked during that period. Look, the pandemic was, it was an intense and stressful time for everyone. And yeah. we, we worked hard and there was lots of pushing and pulling to get to the right answers. What was the friction ordinary or was it more than you would have expected? Because I think that's what you're describing is, mm. is challenging debates inside the room. Well, it was, it was extraordinary in the sense that we we're in an extraordinary time. Right. I mean, the intensity was, was different. But, but so we had the emergency phase where yeah. we had to get those emergency supports out. We had that initial restart phase. And then for me, looking at, you know, what's the right time for me to think about the next thing, the recovery is going to be long. It's yeah. going to be challenging. Yeah. And I think for me, I was clearly not going to run again. I mean, no one expected me to be a lifelong career politician. And, you know, the prime minister rightly, I think, has to look at that longer term. So, yeah. so I think we got to the right outcome and, uh, and it's politics. Yeah, I, I, I believe you when you say that, but, but I will point out that a few days after the prime minister expressed confidence in you, there were more stories. Uh, Bloomberg said that you were too orthodox. Reuters said you pushed back. Um, so this was obviously leaking out of somewhere. Mm. Why do you think that was happening? Well, it's politics. Look, there's, there's all, but there's always going to be that. Yeah. And, and in a stressful time, there's always going to be people with, you know, points of view, trying to make sure we get to the right answer. So, yeah. so I don't see it as, as uh, particularly unusual. I mean, of course, it was in the front page of the paper yeah. because, because it's, it's exciting inside news. But the backdrop to that was we were, were struggling to figure out how to get to the next step. And, and I was struggling with, you know, how do we do that? And am I the right person for that next step? And, you but know, did you feel undermined? By, by those leaks, um, by, by someone saying those things about you publicly? Well, you know, politics is an intense job. And so that intensity happens, you know, inside. It happens in dealing with the media. Yeah. So it, it is part of the reality of the job. I want to ask you a little bit about the WE controversy, um, because you were recently cleared by the Ethics Commissioner, who was asked to look by an NDP MP into whether you failing to disclose a gift of travel was, was a conflict. And he says, you told him that you weren't aware that it had happened. You thought that you had paid. You subsequently were made aware. Mm -hmm. Then you paid. How does it reflect on you that you didn't know that you hadn't paid or you, you didn't, weren't aware? Um, you, you subsequently paid back $41,000. That's a lot of money for a lot of mm. people. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I just have to start by saying I made a mistake. And, and what I did as soon as I found out about the mistake is I took actions to correct it. Yeah. And so uh, what the ethics commissioner said, you know, I'd taken the appropriate measures. It doesn't mean I didn't make a mistake. It yeah. doesn't mean yeah. I shouldn't have recused myself, which he's still looking at yes. appropriately. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm pleased that he, he did look at that and, and recognizes that I took the appropriate corrective actions. Do you think that your involvement in that controversy had anything to do with your departure? I think, really, when you, when you look at it from, from where we were at in the, in the emergency and the restart and the recovery, it was very much about me thinking about what are the appropriate next steps, and the Prime Minister also thinking about how should he deal with that. So, so I really am keenly interested in, in this OECD role. Yeah, I, 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 and I, I, again, I don't, I, don't doubt that that, I don't doubt that you're telling me the truth, but I, I just wonder whether we would be having this conversation and you would be running for this job if those other things hadn't happened, the leaks. Um, and the wheat controversy, which obviously, you know, you apologize for, um, but, but I just wonder whether we would be having this conversation now if those things had not happened. Well, I, let me tell you, I think we would, because yeah. I, I really was thinking about the Secretary General of the OECD job before and recognized that you can't be a sitting finance minister and run for a global position at the same time. So, so that was, was my conclusion, which, of course, I wouldn't have been able to think about had I not had the uh, the opportunity from being a finance minister and getting that experience over five mm -hmm. years that leads me to be able to think about how I can bring that experience to another role. So, uh, you know, it, it always is a little bit messy when you leave politics. I mean, that's kind of the nature of, of, the, uh, 
of the sport. There are no rules, and you, yeah. you've got to find your way out. And uh, and I'm I'm happy to have done it, and I'm yeah. looking forward to the next steps. I know you apologize for recusing yourself. Are you surprised that you weren't that you didn't know better to do that? Did you surprise yourself in in your judgment of that decision? Uh, well, I, I think it's it's important to bring us back to context. So the prime minister and I together were dealing with you know a, a crisis that no one could have predicted. We were making decisions, significant decisions, every single day. Hundreds of sure. decisions on on financing issues, and we were trying to support everybody who was finding themselves in a challenging situation. So it wouldn't have been the only thing that we didn't do perfectly because you don't get everything perfect when you don't have a playbook. Mm -hmm. In this case, you know, I I absolutely think that. Uh, I should have recused myself. I mean, that would have been the right decision. It would have meant that we wouldn't have been having this discussion. Uh, and so the only thing you can do is, is correct your actions when you make a mistake, and that's, yeah. that's what we've done. Um, when you went to the Prime Minister's home, I think you went to his home to resign, mm -hmm. did he ask you to stay? We talked about, you know, the things that we'd done together, uh, talked about what I wanted to do next, so we had a, a good discussion about that. Uh, but I made it clear to him that I was going to be departing and hoped to take on this new opportunity and obviously wanted to work together with the government in, in seeking this role at the OECD. Yeah. Do, do you talk to the Prime Minister? Has, uh, when was the last time you spoke? Oh like yes, the... yeah, I spoke to him last, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And so, uh, you know, we had a good discussion. He's supporting my OECD run, but mm -hmm. you know, more broadly, so it was a, a positive discussion. And I'm in regular contact with my, my ex-colleagues who yeah. are, uh, you know, working hard yeah. under a lot of stress. And there's no animosity. People might find that hard to believe. You know, on, on the contrary, I mean, I really do look at this as it was, it was a, a five-year uh, period of my life where I had the opportunity, and it was an opportunity Canadians gave me and the Prime Minister gave sure. me to make a really big impact. And so I can only look back on that positively and, and recognize that politics is intense. It's, it's intense, it's tough, and there's days that are more difficult than other days, uh, which is like it is for so many other Canadians and what they do. So. Yeah. Uh, so I look back on it, you know, fondly and with a, a real sense of accomplishment. You know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of focus on your family throughout mm. this. Mm. Um, people that did not choose to be political public figures right. the way you did. How was that? What was that like for, for you and for your family? Well, uh, politics is pretty intense and I don't think you can really understand it from the sidelines. I mean, I certainly didn't, when I was CEO of a business, I didn't really appreciate how intense the scrutiny was, mm -hmm. how intense the focus is on, on your actions or the things that you don't do. And I think it's appropriate in the sense that, you know, you, you have to live up to very high standards. I do agree that it's pretty tough on families. You know, I have, uh, you know, four kids and it impacted each of them a little bit differently, but they're protective of me. They in some cases found it was, from their perspective, not fair. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but, you know, they all, they all got through it. You said you didn't maybe understand politics until you were in it. D do you think you understood it while you were in it too? Um. Well, as I said earlier, <laughs> nobody has ever accused me of being a career politician. <laughs> so uh, I didn't aspire to be a career politician. Yeah. I, I wanted to get into politics to have an impact. Uh, so, you know, that was, that was always my goal. I think, like in any role, you, you gain more uh, experience with uh, the challenges as, as you have it for a longer time period. Yeah. So, so I, I think that you, know, you learn a lot from being the Member of Parliament and hearing people's issues one-on-one -on -one in your riding. You learn a lot from dealing with the media and having to present uh, the policies of the day and support them. And uh, that learning curve for me was, was important. So I got better and better in my estimation. But no more. It's not in my cards right now. I do, you know, the politics of, of being the Secretary General at something yes, like the OECD, for sure, for they're sure. real because yeah. you're dealing yeah. with politics between yeah. countries. Yeah. But it's a different nature in terms of the challenge. Right. Uh, so it's one that I think I'm very well prepared for, but, um, but one that uh, will be a little different than the being a politician and being Minister of Finance. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me here. Thank you.